What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the TV and Film Review Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Stuart Scott. Joining me today, our usual guests, uh, David McGregor. Hello. And Liam Kearney. Hello. Silent Liam Kearney. Hello. <laughs> um, Can you not hear me? He's there. He's there. I hear him. <laughs> That's much better. <laughs> um, Sorry. And uh, we're going to get right into it. Um, uh, back on our regular schedule uh, this week. And uh, yeah, we're going to just get right into it uh, with what we've been watching. Or I guess um, more appropriately, what we're going to be watching uh, this week. Um David, do you want to start us off? I know you had a few things to talk about. I will. Um, in terms of what I have been watching, uh, even though I've got a huge backlog of shows that I uh, need to catch up on, I've still been watching um, season four again of Game of Thrones in anticipation for um, the return on um, Sunday slash Monday. So um, it's all about Game of Thrones for me, what I'm going to be watching. I cannot wait for it. I've been watching... Um, the trailers, I've been looking at memes and gifs and all sort of stuff to get me pumped up for season 5 um, and it must be gutting because I know Liam you've read the books but I'm right in thinking this is the first season where stuff isn't going to be linked yeah well I'm guessing so I think yeah I think uh, this will be the season where things are going a bit they must start overtaking I guess because they're quite. A, I know Bran's not going to be in this season because they've caught up with him in the books. Yeah, no Hodor. No Hodor. Hodor. Yeah. Are, are you? I suppose that kind of works well for them, though, doesn't it? Because they were thinking about recasting Bran, weren't they? Oh, were they? Yeah, because he was getting too big. Yeah, because yeah, ah, he's right. kind of not yeah, not that age anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like a kind of fully grown man now, isn't he? <laughs> um. But you know, I'm a bit too big for even Hodor to carry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you looking forward? Is I'm assuming then, Liam. There's a bunch of stuff that has happened in the book so far yeah. that hasn't been on the TV show. And then is it yeah. a case of this is things that you know are going to happen, or are you sort of wondering maybe they're not going to do that, or maybe they're not going to go show that, or whatever? Uh, yeah. There's a couple of bits. I mean, um, there's a couple of. Well, obviously some of the new characters that they've announced so they've got all the Dorn lot so um, the Vipers family they've obviously announced them they're going to be new characters so that's obviously all sorts of come Dorn stuff and then they've announced like this new character the High Sparrow he's quite a big character for the King's Land and stuff so there's obviously stuff that's in the books that they haven't caught up with yet that are obviously going to be in it but there is stuff that they've missed like the Iron yeah, um, what's his face um, the guy that got his penis chopped off Theon uh, Yes, his family. They they have like a whole big, well not a whole big, not that big, but they have like a storyline all to themselves. But that's not been featured yet, so I don't know whether they're gonna cut that out, and they're just not gonna, because I don't think they've been really big on the TV show, so I don't know whether they're just not gonna bother with it. Yeah. And then there's also the thing that everyone thought was gonna, that I as well, I included, thought was gonna be in the finale of the last season and wasn't. And my other, I wouldn't read up on it if you don't because it'll spoil it, but there's a certain thing where I'm thinking they're not going to, they keep saying they're not going to include it, which would be shit. Right, is this, this is the thing that you've been banging on about for about two seasons, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, this huge thing, and I, am obviously I'm not going to um, spoil anything, I read something very sort of briefly, um, you know, scanning through Game of Thrones stuff on Twitter recently, um, and it was relating to, I think, what you might be talking about, but it almost sounds too ridiculous to be true, if it's the same thing. Um, it just, it, I mean, when I read it, I thought, oh, someone's just, you know, someone's just making that up because that can't happen. If it does, it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and people are going to... I don't really want to know what it is now, but I don't, don't, don't want to ask. And people will go mental. Uh, but I, I'm assuming what I've read is just nonsense. Um, yeah, I don't know. You'll have to tell me what it is you've read. But no. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you don't give it, you you can't give it away. No. Um, right. Do you know what, Stu? You tell us what you're looking forward to, um, and in the meantime, I will uh, drop Liam a message telling him what <laughs> what I've heard. <laughs> that way, I don't get any sort of reaction. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I must be the 
the, f the only person in the world who didn't know that Game of Thrones was coming back this week. Uh, I thought it was like next month before it came back. Um, so I have not been watching Game of Thrones season four. Um, I have been catching up on House of Cards. Uh, I've managed to battle through that and I'm on, I think I'm about halfway through season three now. Um, what are you thinking of yeah, season three? Are you liking it? Or? Uh, not as much as the first two seasons. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people have told me that it, it is kind of weird. Um, like there's a lot of stuff that doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, like the big, the big thing in like the first or second episode where uh, he, he has a threesome with his bodyguard. What, what the hell was that all about? Apparently that doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the the bodyguard character kind of, or the secret service guy, whatever you want to call, him, um, kind of just drops out of the show a little bit. Yeah. Um, which is a bit of a disappointment. I thought he was a decent character. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, a very interesting show. It's the kind of thing that I like. It's very Mad Men esque. Like, not a whole lot happens, but everything happens. Um, and yeah, I like it. It's it's really good. Um, so I'm I'm hoping to get that finished this week. Um, maybe before Game of Thrones. Um, I've not. I don't think I've actually been watching anything else. Um. Watching old Curb Your Enthusiasms and things like that, um, but um, only recently found out that Mad Men came back last night, uh, as of recording, which would have been Sunday night. Um, so I'm going to be watching that this week. Uh, I believe this is the final season that it's going into. It is the last seven episodes, maybe last eight, something like that. Oh, they only they only done seven or eight episodes. Do you know? Yeah. I thought they may have like split it into like a. A longer season, but well, well, that, two that, half that, seasons, sort of thing. Well, that, that's what it is. Yeah, this is two. Oh, this right. Is, okay. This is the second half of the final season starting. Oh, right. Okay. Right, I get you. It's one of those um, ones where they have like a huge break. Um, yeah, out, I, I didn't. I, yeah, as Outlander did that year, recently as well. Outlander premiered like last summer, I think, um, yeah, or something yeah. like that. And then it aired like eight episodes, and then it's only just returned for the second half of the season. Like last week, Jeez, oh. um, it's weird to do that with the first season as well. Yeah, really strange. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be catching up on Mad Men as well. Um, I'm not sure what else I'm. Uh, I'm going to go and see uh, the new Fast and the Furious movie uh, that came out. A lot of people have told me it's really good. Um, I think you really have to. That, that I think that's a film where. You've really got to be into your kind of fast cars or that sort of genre. Um, see, I I just cannot get on board with that. Like, I think it was the last film. When was Six out? Maybe about two or three years ago. Uh, two, uh, uh, yeah, two years ago, I think. Yeah, I went. That was one. I, I think I fell asleep at. Um, it was oh God, like man. one of the very only times. To be fair, it was like a eleven o'clock show or something. Um, right. But it was just like. It, it just so wasn't my type of film. I think I'd seen the first one, maybe. The first two. Um, the Vin Diesel right. ones. Um, and uh, just just not my cup of tea. Yeah, see, it's really changed. Like, I've only... I haven't seen the sixth one. I'll need to watch that before I go to the seventh. Um, but since uh, the reboot, basically, it's just like a completely different kind of film. Like, the first two are very... Like racing heavy, um, like very car heavy, and then the third one is just a shambles. Uh, and then after the reboot, it's just kind of turned into like heist movies, like um, generic kind of crime movies, and that's fair enough. Like I can deal with that. It's it's just a new action franchise, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I don't I don't mind them. Um, I used to be really into my cars and all that, so. I know enough about it to get by on that. Um, I'm thinking about catching up on Walking Dead as well, just to get the talking points. Um, even though I still hate it, and I will never ever enjoy it again. Um, but I think I can battle through it. And it's been getting a lot of hate this season. Oh, yeah, you're not gonna, uh, you're yeah, not gonna enjoy it hurt. anymore. It's not good. Uh, see, I, I wouldn't go that far. I, I, it's certainly not. I've not been enjoying it as much as 
uh, previous seasons and especially the finale because one of the things Walking Dead does really well is it has great season openers and season finales and this one felt a little bit weak in comparison. I'm, I'm still enjoying it. I still want to watch it every single week. Um, it's not a show now where I'm... It's nowhere near being dropped from my schedule is what I'm saying. Yeah. If you... Um, if you read, quick plug for the site, on t- go onto the website, tvandfilmreview.com, and read our episode reviews by um, Natalie Woods, who does them every week. Um, she's really enjoyed the season. Um, I think nearly every episode she's given a, um, you know, an eight out of ten or above. So, I guess I'm I'm not quite alone in my um, liking for the season, but I know you disagree, Liam. No, no, I do. I mean, I still, I still like it, but it's just, it's not as good as it was, and I just found this season a bit, just a bit dull. Like, yeah, I mean, the finale was pretty weak. I think because like, you come to expect, like you say, you come to expect now with a finale, someone's gonna die and there's gonna be a big thing, and it was all just a bit of a, a letdown. But then they had killed off quite a few people, kind of a few episodes before, so I suppose they can't keep killing them all off. So, yeah. mm, it is true. I had to have got a, like a big. The supposed twist for next season lined up. Uh, they've kind of teased it a little bit, but I don't really know if anything's a twist now in it. Basically, whoever the best character is is going to die, by the looks of things. Okay. I really hope the maid didn't pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> my, be- my belly just rumbled, and it was so loud. Um, Um, that is one thing that I'll say to it. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there who Michonne is their favourite character. Um, and there's a lot of people who... The, the, the one thing that I say about Rick is Rick seems to be everyone's favourite character when he's being... Um, what's a polite way of saying it? Bad Rick? A dick. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering how family-friendly we were going to make it. There was, there was far worse... Nah, I far could, I, nah. I could use there, but... Yeah, when uh, Rick's not being himself um, and he's taking no prisoners, I think a lot of people like that side of Rick. There's a lot of people that like Daryl. Um, he's a lot of people's favourite character. Same with Carol. Um, and Abraham, even, I've heard a few. So I think the one thing is, I don't think there's a universal favourite character. It's not like Game of Thrones, where um, I think the majority of people's favourite character is probably Tyrion. If you were to do like a big poll of people, mm, I think Tyrion would be at the top. Um, I think it's slightly different from Walking Dead. Um, see, I think I think it used to be that way. I don't think it is anymore. I think everyone just likes Daryl and Michonne and basically whoever's cool in the latest episode. Like, if if uh, if Daryl wasn't the show, I don't think anyone would watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, here's um, a question. Uh, you you won't know this, um, Shu, given you haven't watched the latest season. Um, and Liam, you may have. Um, picked up on it but I've heard a lot of rumours that um, they are um, making their well not making him turn gay but they're going to be outing Daryl um, and they've put a little sort of uh, a couple of things in this season um, to sort of lead up to that why have they said he's gay when did they say that I sure it was just, I'm sure it was before the, the new because they split the seasons as well so when the, before the new half second half of the season started everyone was like oh daryl's gay daryl's gay and then they said he wasn't but they were introducing a gay character and then that's when that guy who now travels around with daryl whose name i don't know um then they brought him in and he's gay ah, i could be wrong maybe they're maybe they're setting them up for a little loving i don't know well but they, i don't thought they dreaded that they said they weren't they weren't gonna make daryl gay yeah oh you might be right um it, i i hadn't really thought of it at all and uh and even when he was, um, you know, when he was, it, I think it was a fact that there was that episode when they introduced, um, is one of them's called, one of them is Eric and something else, the other new guy, his partner. Yeah. Um, anyway, they introduced them and Daryl wasn't settling in and it was the, the same episode that, um, I don't know, for me it seemed to be like they were pushing it that, um, Daryl finally settled in when he um, started um, like making friends with them. You know, it was almost like a bit like, really? Are they really kind of trying to push this um, sort of thing? And 
and then I read a lot of things about it online. You know, people are saying, well, that's why he never got with Carol and he never went with Beth and all this sort of stuff. Like, you know when you, someone gets, like, this tiny little inkling of a rumour and then they just, like, make, yeah, ev- just go with it. make everything, yeah. every, everything else relating to the character go around it. But Yeah, yeah. I think I heard, the, yeah, I heard all that. But I thought they didn't come out and say no. You maybe, don't. maybe I, you're right. I, I hope, I, I, I hope so. Um... Because I think he's, a, I think he's an interesting character, and I'm quite interested to know like why he hasn't, you know, gone with Carol, um, and Beth. Because they've they've always sort of teased that relationship, haven't they? Um, and it's it's never been there, and I'm quite interested, um, quite interested why. But anyway. Yeah. Uh. So Liam, what have you been uh, watching this week, or planning to watch this week? Uh. I've been well, I've been watching Veep because that comes back next week as well along with Game of Thrones. So I've been watching. I got the DVDs for my other half's birthday from last week, so we've been watching them. I just forget how good it is, like because it's by the guy that did Thick of It. Thick of It's very very good. Um, but I never really thought Veep was anywhere near as funny. But then since we've been watching it, I've actually realised how funny it is. So I'm really looking forward to that coming back next week. Um, so that Game of Thrones and Silicon Valley's back next week as well. So that's. Silicon Valley's well. excellent, isn't it? It's good. I don't. I don't think I quite like it as much as you or uh, Robbie seem to like it. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was really good. You'd you'd like it, Stu, if you haven't seen it. Ah, uh, yeah, I've watched Are it. Yeah. Really enjoy it. Yep. I I thought it had a very kind of entourage feel to it, like that sort of. Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's a, Yeah, that's a good uh, a good way of describing it. I think it's funnier than that though. I think it's funnier than Entourage. Oh, don't know about um, that. That's a, that's a, it's a bold claim. Well, I, I don't know, Entourage isn't that, f- like it's a good dramedy, but it's not like a, I would say Silicon Valley's more of an outright comedy than uh, what Entourage is, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get what you mean. Like it's more sitcom Yeah. Um, and I like that, I think it's easier to laugh at. Um, Entourage is more like bits, it's like it's very, I don't know, <laughs> I've just I've backed myself into a corner here and I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> um... But yeah, it's more—it's a different kind of comedy, basically. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, well, when did you say that's coming back? Is that this week? Uh, it's next weekend. With Game next of weekend. Right. No, this nice. th- this weekend, isn't it? Or this weekend, yeah. Yeah. This weekend, nice. I keep thinking today's Sunday because I've been off work for a few days with it being Easter. I'm so confused <laughs> what day it is. Yeah. Um, um, speaking of comedies, which I know you guys will probably hate this, but I saw Mrs. Brown's Boys live in Glasgow last week. That was oh, a. Dear. That was good. Uh, can, is there <laughs> we can cut him from the podcast now? <laughs> <laughs> um, do, you, do you want to give a little, just in case anyone's listening from overseas, give a quick um, recap on what Mrs. Brown's Boys is? It's a comedy. And, oh, it's well, a that, that, even that's stretching it. It's a comedy. Yeah. Well, I, well, I, it was funny. The, the light, I mean, I'm not... I do it. Well, I do like I'm not going to lie. It is funny, but it was really funny live because they kept, obviously, the ad lib part. Where they all just uh, crack up on the station. It was good, but our tickets got upgraded, so we we're VIPs. So I mean, that's why I enjoyed it. But uh, basically, Mrs. Brown's boys is a man dressed up as a woman, and that's Mrs. Brown, and her, his, his, her, his family play all of the other characters. So his wife is, plays his daughter, and his son plays a family friend, and I think his sister plays his neighbour. So basically, if you're in with that family, you get a part on the show. So it's not good. And they all just basically, it's quite rude and. Yeah, ends up doing rude things, usually with I don't know sex toys and random stuff. What was uh, what was the VIP upgrade like? Well, it was good. We got better seats. So we were kind of right in front of the stage. We got our own kind of booth for drinks. People direct us to our seats and everything. So it was good. Quite enjoyed it. I think that made the experience even better, to be honest. Um, so I went with my mum and dad because I'm that cool, and uh, yeah, well, they loved it too. I mean, my mum was embarrassing. I thought people behind us were going to tell her to shut up. She was that loud laughing. But uh, yeah, no, it was good. So that's what I've been watching. And the other thing I was going to mention was uh, Pretty Little Liars because that finished this week. But you guys don't watch it, so I can't complain. I need someone like I need someone like Taylor on it who watches it so I can complain about the finale. But was it a good finale? No, because well, it was. But the same, it's getting it's getting a bit ridiculous now. And. Every, pretty much every season, it's like they're going to reveal. If you don't know it, it's these four girls are getting harassed by this mysterious character called A, who they thought was their friend Allison who died, but now it turns out she isn't dead. But 
every se practically every season they're like, oh, we're going to reveal who he is at the end of the season, so they do. And I think we're on like the fourth reveal now, and every time they change it, you know, they're like, you know, end of season three, they're like, oh, it's this one of the girls' boyfriends, A, and then in season four, it actually, no, he was working for them the whole time. And they just keep going back on what they're doing, and it's just getting kind of a bit fed up with it now. Do you I'm think they have no idea where they're going? Yes. Well, the the person who they've now picked is a completely new person who they've just randomly thrown in, like a secret twin nobody knew about. So it's like they've just, yeah, it really feels like they're clutching at straws now. I've still got two more seasons to go. It's just, oh, God. Anyway, it's still good. Whatever. That's what I've been watching. There is um, there is lots of pretty people on Pretty Little Liars, and that is, that is going to be a very good chance for me to plug um, something that's coming up this week on the website, which is our annual poll to find the most beautiful women on US TV. Um, which wow, that time of year already. It is. It comes back this year, and um, we have 100 beautiful ladies shortlisted. Um, they'll all be going up on the website, split into various groups for people to vote on. Last year's winner was Hayden Panettiere from Nashville. Uh, she had very two. She had two two years in a row. She came second in 2013. She won it last year, so we will see if she can have another um, strong performance or whether someone new will take the crown. I'm quite surprised she does so. No, not to slag her off, but I can't believe she does that well. I didn't think she was that well. She has a lot of fans. She obviously does. Um, I think it's she's. That's dry outfit. That's what it is. May, may, maybe that's. Yeah, it's that, that those uh, residual heroes fans. That's what it is. Yeah. Do you know who did very well last year? Um, and she was runner-up was Adelaide Kane from Rain. Oh yeah. She she was runner-up last year, which was uh, surprised. Big fan base behind her. I think I think it's uh it's more about the fan base, isn't it? Uh, my my pick got put out really early on. I was gutted. Uh, yeah. To be fair, your pick. Uh, she was she, she she was nice, like, you know. I wouldn't say no. Um, it, I might think that's her from True Detective. Yes. Um, Amazing. Still my favourite. Yeah. Sadly, I can't back her this year because I don't think she's done anything. Yeah, she but. is not eligible this year. Um, Damn. Uh, neither was um, 2013's winner, um, Yvonne Strahovski. Strahovski. Yeah, yeah, she was in. Oh uh, yeah, because it was Dexter and. She was in Chuck. She was in, wasn't it? No, twenty four. Twenty four, so it was. Which is also now finished. So. Yeah. Unlucky, Yvonne. Um, but yeah, I've got a feeling we're going to have a new champion. I don't think Miss Panettiere is going to be able to retain her title. Well, the, do, do you know there's actually quite a few strong contenders this year? Um, new contenders, I think. Um. Victoria Justice from Eye Candy. Oh, I've been watching that show. Oh, it's annoying me. Yeah, that it's it's an annoying show. Uh, very pretty girl, though, but she has a massive fan base. Victoria Justice. She's come through all the sort of whole Disney teen things, um, and she's you know very pretty girl. And also Eva Green from Penny Dreadful. I think she could prove to be very popular. No, Eva Green fans. <laughs> no? I'm not, I'm not sure. It's another name. I can't I can't blaze her. So I wouldn't like to comment. Um, okay. Anyway, that's that. That's my plug done. Uh, check the site out this week. Yeah, very excited for that. Um, it's a good time of year for us. Um, so why don't we move on to some news? First thing I want to bring up before we go on to our main topic. Um, big kind of... Uh, internet related event um, you know I like my, my internet stuff um, the YouTube vlogger I guess you would call her uh, Grace Helvig um, she has been announced as having her own uh, TV show on NBC uh, quite, a, quite a big step for the the medium of, of internet media uh, but I, I basically have no idea what it's going to be like uh, it looks like a kind of bigger version of her web show, um, Daily Grace, is it? Um, yeah, I, it looks it looks quite interesting. I'll watch it and see what it's like. I'm not um, I'm not familiar with her at all. Um, so please fill me in on uh, what sort of what, what sort of stuff it is she does. Um, it's kind of hard to describe. It's like a 
I'm sure you've seen other vloggers yeah, oh, uh, yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. Um, it's that sort of thing, like kind of lifestyle chat that they do. Um, usually some guests on and things like that. Um, I believe she does some collaborations with, is it Hannah Hart as well? Um, I think. I, I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan, but. Uh, do you know what I think is? I'm aware of her content. I was gonna say, do you know I think it's interesting though that. In this day and age, you know, TV's kind of dying out because pretty much everyone want you know do it on catch up and streaming sites and all that. That someone who's you know on YouTube, which is probably going to be, you know, the future, has decided to go on to TV. Do you think that's a? Do you think it? It's because she just got offered money to do it, or? Yeah. Think, well, I think it's where I, the money is, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> probably, but I think you're right, Liam. Um, that's one of the things I thought when I heard about it as well. It's kind of a, a step back in a way. Because the viewership that she's going to get on NBC isn't going to be anywhere near as much as what she'll get on YouTube. Um, but I think it was a pretty hefty contract she got um, through the a season of the show. Um, I don't remember the exact figure, but yeah, I think it was it was pretty uh, a pretty big deal for her. Um, so fair play if it's if it's going to um, give her a comfortable comfortable life and all that um, from there. Um, I actually, I'm sure there was someone else had one on, was it E? Um, someone else got confirmed from kind of YouTube, but, um, yeah, like you say, it's, it's interesting to see, um, more of those kind of internet personalities getting, getting their own content on mainstream media. Yeah, because I'm sure I saw it as well, sorry, um. One of the blogger vloggers or somebody from YouTube is being on one of the pilots. I think it's you know that cuckoo on BBC Three. I think NBC are doing their own version of that, and I'm sure they've got some YouTube stars going to be starring in that as well. So it seems to be quite the kind oh. of thing at the moment that yeah. Kind I mean, of, I can understand why the uh, the TV networks would want to do that, like get people involved in there uh, from the internet to try and bring over that sort of fan base. Um, because some of them are huge, like. PewDiePie has, is it like 40 million subscribers or something like that? Um, if every one of them watched their watched the first episode of their show, it'd be massive. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting um, to see how it's going to go. Um, and if that could be like TV trying to bring back in the, the fight against uh, new media, or the like to call it. Um, but yeah, that's all I had to say on that. I just thought it'd be worth bringing up. Um, the kind of main story we're, we decided to talk about this week was X Files. Um, been announced as getting. I don't know. Is that a series reboot or is it picking up where the the old series left off? Um, I haven't read too much into it. I think it's picking up. I think it's there's. They're picking up where it left off, so I think it's however long it's been off the air, it's you know, it's been that amount of time. Uh, They're coming twelve back. years. A, res a resurrection rot. Twelve oh years. God, wow. that makes me feel old. I didn't realise it was that long. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a resurrection rather than a rather than a reboot. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think David Duchovny came out and said that had they had they came back and said that they were going to run for a full um, season, um, they wouldn't have done it. They said, but because it's only going to be six episodes, they were uh, they were quite keen that they could um, come and you know wrap up a few storylines, introduce a couple of new things, without giving up too much commitment. Um, so they were happy to do six episodes. Uh, it's quite a good idea because obviously um, David Duchovny's had a lot of success since X Files, and uh, Gillian Anderson's got a lot of success just now uh, with that show that I always forget the name of, uh, the one set in Northern Ireland that she stars in. The Fall, yeah, that's it. Um, I feel bad because it's a really good show. Um, and I always, always forget the name of it. Um, I was I was going to say, as uh, Californication's finished up now, isn't it? So I don't think David Duchovny's got any other projects lined up. He does. He's in this thing, this Charles Manson thing. Because it's going to be... Because they were kind of... They were saying it was already the next fast thing anyway, because he's in a new show on NBC. Sorry. 
but the TV geek in the oh. TV. He's on a new show at NBC, and it's it's he's like the detective who's following Charles Manson back in the 60s. Oh, okay. And then that's and then that's like on at nine, and then at ten is going to be the new season of Hannibal, which Gillian Anderson's going to be in. So at the time, it oh. was like, oh, it's two hours of you know Mulder and Scully back to back, and then they mm. announced that the X Files is coming back as well. So. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, it, it'll be tough to see if it's uh, if it is successful. Do you think they'll you know, pick up? You, how do you think it will translate to younger fans? So say you've got people now, um, you know, watching TV who are um, at no so sorry, the, the sixteen to twenty four year old demographic who have never experienced X Files before. You know, as a current TV show. Do you think that's going to be something? I mean, Aliens in general was such a big craze, and X Files um, back in the nineties had a lot to do with that. Um, but the whole sort of extraterrestrial thing was like massive back then. Um, do you think it's going um, um, to? Kind of. Um, like I, I know uh, a lot of people, like even younger than myself, who kind of picked up X Files late, like uh, just a year or two ago. Um, and kind of fell in love with it. it just became this kind of cult thing all over again um, but I, I don't know if it will work as I think if, if, if it is going to kick off again they'll need to announce another series of it after this um, rather than just the six episodes I don't think that will kick off a revival you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, what other um, what other TV reboots um, are coming up that you do think um, have some kind of that could do quite well? Um, I don't know about. <laughs> I'm, I'm optimistic about uh, Full House, which just got announced this week. Uh, John Stamos. Um, that's coming back on Netflix. So. I don't imagine that a lot of people who use Netflix will be that familiar with Full House. Um, like at, like you say, the kind of 16 to 24, it's maybe a bit too young for it. Although, the one thing that Netflix does have going for it is that, uh, certainly for myself, whenever they um, bring out an original series, I make sure I watch it because they have such a strong record so far. Yeah, absolutely. The track, like, track record is... Uh, Phenomenal. You know, it, it's, um, they're not like you know uh, broadcast networks who are you know churning out um, you know twenty shows every season. You know, they, yeah. you know they bring two you know what two or three out maybe a year now. Probably yeah. they're probably starting to ramp it up slightly, but um, they have such a kind of good track record with the shows that they've done so far that whenever I see a, a Netflix original, I make sure to check it out, and they have that going for them. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I'm optimistic on it as well. Um, like Daredevil, Daredevil is going to be massive. <laughs> as long as it's not Ben Affleck, I guess. <laughs> but I might think of Daredevil. Sorry, I know we're going off track a little bit here, but uh, Daredevil is going to be um, um, what is it, X rated? Whatever the whatever the official term for uh, 18 R-rated? is. R rated. That's it. R rated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, I haven't heard that. I'm I'm sure I saw that somewhere. He was on Twitter. Maybe right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. It would be interesting if it was. It would cha- uh, make it a little bit darker. Change of pace um, from other superhero stuff at the moment. It's all very yeah. PG. Yeah. Um, even darker than like sort of like Shield and uh, Gotham and Arrow and all that stuff. Um, I know they like DC guys tried to go a little bit darker with uh, the TV shows, um, whereas Marvel kind of kept it. I, I can just see how that how this conversation is going to go. It's going to go into like a big superhero thing. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to stay away from that. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it is. Because uh, I can't imagine them doing it like like filthy comedy, um, the way Deadpool has been uh, rated R for. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't um, think. I think looking at the trailers, I think it'll just be surely be the violence and maybe some lady bits. Surely, probably yeah, R-rated rather possible. than. Well, I suppose the good thing um, about I was going to say about Full House, with it, if it's going to be on Netflix, then Netflix can just release if they get the rights to the original series and then release that before they release the new version, and that's the way of getting. Yeah, I think that's the game plan, isn't it? 
you would think so. Um, I, again, like I, like I say, it's not. I don't think it's something that people, especially over here, will be familiar with. Like, uh, I'm sure Nickelodeon had it on when uh, when I was kind of in high school and all that, um, or maybe just starting high school and a primary school. Um, so, so it's just kind of good luck that I know what it is. Um, even then, I, I wasn't like a massive fan or anything. Um, but I think it's more kind of people in there like late twenties, early thirties that know what it is over in the States. Um, that are kinda of familiar with it. I think anyone younger than that is gonna be kinda of struggling. Uh they'll be like, What's what's going on? Even the format and all that is not really um it's kind of old sitcom. Do you know what I mean? I like it's very kinda of family friendly like there's nothing on TV on a Friday night, so this is what you're getting. <laughs> Yeah. Who, who's uh, coming back for that? Um, there's not Hero, uh, Hero, Hero's coming back. Yeah, Masioka is the only. The no, one I've heard. the the other no the other one's uh, the main character, which is I forget Claire's the actor's name. Claire's dad. Yeah, no, Noah Bennett is the, is the, oh, yeah, okay. is the character, and I can't remember the actor's name. Um, but he, I think he's the main guy for this season. Is that right? Right. Um, I suspect we'll see other characters pop up cameos or little guest stunts here and there um, um i don't know because a lot of them have kind of made it big since heroes like it really kicks off the career like hayden panettiere um zachary quinto uh, they've all kind of went on to bigger things uh like i can't think um maybe see oh who was it which character was it that was kind of closely associated with him in the in the show again? Was it Ali Larto's character? Oh yeah, she's in uh, Legends at the moment with Sean Bean. All right, okay. She's always got something going, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of these people who just pops up and everything. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not expecting too many cameo appearances from people. I think they're quite happy to just kind of give it a restart and. Um, treat this as its own sort of thing that's carrying on from the old heroes. Um, but I know what you mean, Liam. I, do, I don't know if I'm excited for it. Like I, I like the concept more than I like the what the show kind of ended up being. Um, even like the second season, it started dipping quite quite a lot. Um, I think for me, it was um, the season one finale. I mean, season one was excellent. Um, really, you know, kind of new concept. Really, kind of um, gripped my attention. The full, uh, but the, the one thing I was expecting the season one finale was that all these people with all these different powers would come together in this one sort of um, big, huge battle. Um, you know, against Siler. Yeah, it felt like it was going and that way. It, and it, all that happened was um, it all came down to I think it was Peter against Siler, and then yeah. the the flying guy Nathan. Um, yeah. took him up and that was it and I think through the whole four seasons they never ever had like all the heroes coming together in this big sort of fight you know this big sort of standoff you know and big battle which I thought was really kind of missing a trick yeah I felt like it was going to go that way in season one but I, I don't know if maybe they kind of got surprised with the popularity and rewrote it quickly um, so that they could continue it on yeah, because it's not meant to be that, that every s- every season would be different characters, but then because I don't know if that was just a myth, but it's meant to be every season was different characters, and then because all the season one lot were so popular, they had to kind of rewrite things to yeah. keep them going in like the second season. And everything. I that, that's the way it should have been, I think. Um, that would have been much better. Um, although that was that was one of the shows that got hit really hard with the writer strike as well, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Back oh, in. God. Right God, was that like 2008 <laughs> or something? Oh, that makes me feel old. Can you, um, can you, do you know what? Can you imagine if there was another writer strike now? Oh, the absolute sea <sighs> from like people. I mean, I'd imagine Game of Thrones was off the air for like three years. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Oh, but then George Harrow um, wanted a dashboard to get a book out, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
We'll probably just manufacture a writer strike just so that they can <laughs> catch up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about Heroes as well. Um, what was the other one that I had? Um, I've mentioned it before. Uh, oh, Twin Peaks. Um, that's that's um, getting a reboot as well. Ah, but is it? Have um, you not seen the news over the weekend? The guy's not doing it. Well, I yeah, I just seen that David Lynch isn't going to be in it. Um, but I think it's like it's already been written and oh. um, like all the other cast have been kind of assigned on it. Oh really? Uh, like it's all kind of set to go on production and yeah, David Lynch has bailed out. So. I don't know. Like they can't really replace him, obviously, because he's like the main character. But uh, I don't know. Can they do something without him? What do you think? Mm. Do you know what I'm um, really surprised hasn't been given a TV reboot yet? Is Star Trek? I think, given that the most recent films came out to uh, to quite a quite good, decent success, actually. Um, the kind of films have been, you know, rebooted. Um, I'm really surprised that no one's kind of tapped in for some sort of Star Trek series uh, there's a reboot. Rumor, there's a rumour CBS are, though. I mean, you just think, oh, CBS. It'd just be like a horrible procedural, procedural. shit. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, apparently they're looking at it. And they're oh. bringing the Muppets. ABC are apparently looking at bringing the Muppets back as well. I'm all down for that. That's quite a good idea. Um, Depending on what their target audience is, Muppets was at its best when it catered for children uh, with a couple of sort of adult you know some little kind of adult jokes thrown in there now and again you know if you're watching with See, the parents but I, th- I think yeah I think the Muppets would have to cater to the people who remember the Muppets yeah I don't think they could do it for kids anymore because it's not really like a thing for kids like the the whole um yeah be like daddy yeah daddy why more, why, uh, why is there puppets on the screen why aren't they computer generated you know, <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah um i don't think that's really popular with children's tv now um but i think it could be great because even the movies um the movies are awesome um for like, people our age and yeah love the first one kind of remember the um remember the, the style of the muppets and all that um so i think that could be an interesting take um just on Star Trek being a procedural, like, was the original not really a procedural? They were. They had a few ongoing um, storylines throughout. I, I was never a huge fan. My dad used to watch them religiously, um, so I, I always kind of caught bits here and there. Um, but I think they were all pretty much procedurals with um, a few ongoing themes, and you would get a lot of double episodes, you know, yeah. or, or ones episodes that would go, you know, that would their story arc would run for maybe three episodes at a time and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in that sense, I think CBS would be quite a good pick for them. Because mm-hmm. um, even like uh, Elementary is one of my favourite shows just now. Um, just because it's kind of you don't need to focus too much on the story, like it's not losing anyone every week. But it's still interesting, and well done enough that it's it's very watchable. You know, um, I think CBS do procedurals pretty well. Um, I, although I don't know if. There's maybe a hold up because they don't want to burn out people on Star Trek. Um, obviously, like you say, the movies have done really well, and there's another movie in the works, I'm sure. Um, but I don't know if they maybe want to kind of hold back on that. Uh, maybe. To avoid people getting burned out. Maybe. Um, see, I, I don't think there's any like from back in the day that I would really want to see new ones of. I would like to see an X-Files reboot if this one does well, like use this kind of six episode arc as a transition into maybe like new agents taking over and doing that um, kind of sci-fi alien horror thing. Uh, what, about, that back. what about a Saved by the Bell reboot? No, no, no way. No. Mark and Mindy? <laughs> I'm too young for Mark and Mindy. Happy Days. Hey. Uh, do you know what? Happy Days is one of these weird shows that holds up. Like, I, you can go and watch it and see if you treat it like a, like a 50s period sitcom. Like, you, you can kind of get into it. It's still 
it still stands up, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it. Bad show. I think as well, it it comes a lot to um, how attached you are with the original show. Um, like I am such such a big fan of Cheers. Um, yeah. For me, it's the kind of the best sitcom of all time. And if they said they were going to remake Cheers, I would be livid. Uh, because I, I I don't want them to touch it. Yeah, uh, I don't think I think Cheers is one of these ones that doesn't really need redone. No, it'd be like redoing Friends. Yeah. Um, and I think that that stands for a lot of things because TV recent TV doesn't age as badly. By as the what yeah, older TV does. sorry. Speaking of Friends, um, I'm sure I read somewhere that they have rebooted Friends in another country. Um, oh my god, look, Mexican friends or something? Yeah, <laughs> I would I'm, watch sure, that. I'm sure it's um, I'm sure it's something like um, Bo- 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 Bulga- Bulgarian or um, <laughs> Belarusian or something um, yes. but I remember the pilot was available online um, to to watch um, and it's it's the same characters, you know, Joey and Rachel and Chandler and all that yeah, but just but uh, <laughs> Bulgarian <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. I apologise in advance to the people of Bulgaria because I I suspect out of the two hundred countries in the world, I have uh, it's, it's probably <laughs> probably not Bulgaria. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to look that up when we're finished. Um, I think it's now is probably a good time to to move on because we've got a few other things that we need to. Before we get uh, to anything touch. else, it's I think this is a great time to do the next episode of Challenge Stew. Challenge you! Oh God! Even after the, the disaster that was the first one. Yep. So, <laughs> uh, I think Stu Field was challenged last week, which was um, it was really. I thought I done well. Yeah, do you know what? You, you, you did quite well. Uh, we're getting we're gonna go a bit easier on you this week. Um, we have a bit of a quiz for you. So. Um, okay. I like quizzes. I'm good at quizzes. Yeah. So no internet. So we'll be listening oh. out for tapping of the keyboard here. <laughs> okay. Keyboard is down. Yeah. He picks up his phone instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. So um, no internet allowed here. You're going to get okay. one minute. Um, the question I'm going to ask you has ten answers. Okay. Do, I, do you want so, me to time it? Sorry. Uh, no. I, I guess, no. I, you know, I'm going to stop watching. And okay. do you know what, Liam? You can fill in the blanks at the end. See if you can get any. Oh, right, okay. That, um, that, that, that Stu doesn't get. Right, okay. Um, okay. Are you ready, Stu? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. I want you... This is as of the 6th of April, 2015, um, okay. to name the, any of the top 10 films in the IMDb top film list. Your time starts... Was, wait, 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 wait. Is that ever? <laughs> yes, of ever. Okay, right. Top 10 okay. ever. Go. Uh, Godfather's got to be there. Correct. Um, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Correct. Um, the other Lord of the Rings films. Incorrect. No. Uh, Harry Potter and the. Nope. Nope. None of the Harry <sighs> Potters. Uh, Star Wars episode. Nope. Four. No. Fuck. <laughs> um, uh, you haven't even got number one yet. You're t- you're halfway I through. Got number one. Jeez. Oh. Uh, Titanic. No. Are you kidding? Titanic's amazing. Avatar. <laughs> nope. God. Um, oh. Goodfellas. Um, oh, oh good. no. No. <laughs> Scarface. Uh, no. Oh, this is this. Uh, You've got 10 seconds. Uh, Dark Knight? Yes, Dark Knight oh. is in there. Number four. Yeah. Well done. Um... Ten sec- oh, I don't think we're going to get another one in ten seconds. Ah, um, that's time. Oh. Liam, to st- tough on that thought. Liam to steal. <laughs> <laughs> Can I use the internet? No, you can't. Oh, well, I've looked. <laughs> Shawshank, Rede- <laughs> Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, Shawshank Redemption number oh, one. Yeah. Sure. Um, you also missed The Godfather Part 2. Um, oh, okay. Pulp Fiction. Oh, Pulp Fiction. I, I was thinking Tarantino and I couldn't... couldn't uh, yeah. Get, get the titles out. Um, Schindler's List, Twelve Angry Men, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Um, what and the hell is Twelve Angry Men? Uh, it's that nineteen fifty seven classic. <laughs> right. About about Twelve Angry Men. Come on, everyone knows the story about a dissenting <laughs> juror. Um, 
a dissenting juror, two seconds of pop-ups come up, <laughs> <laughs> and a murder trial slowly manages to convince um, the others that the case is not as obviously clear as it seemed in court. Um, Henry uh, Fonda. That, that's better than Titanic. Um, apparently so. Um, do you know what? There'll be 12 Angry Men fans all over cursing us right now. Um, Just 12 of them? <laughs> Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and the the other one you missed is uh, Fight Club. Oh, okay, fair enough. I didn't think Fight Club was the top ten, right enough. But uh, so okay. you got three out, three out of ten. Um, in I think Just you got, three? yeah, Godfather, oh. Dark Knight, and Lord of the Rings. Uh, Return of the King. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so I think on that basis, I think had you got five or more, it would have been a pass. <laughs> um, but, but but three's uh, three's three's pretty poor. Oh my hands up! That, that was a that was a tough one. I thought it was going to be. Did it? Um, that was tough. I wouldn't have even got three streets. He did very well. I'll I'll I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thanks, Liam. Are, are you voting that that Stu gets that one then? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> he did better than. I, that. I think you're right. I think I think fifty percent is the pass mark. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Okay, that's challenge two um, for that this was, week. That was much more successful than last time. Though. Yeah. <laughs> next week I'll have I'm, something I'm happy great. I come back next week. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll move on to our last segment, uh, which is one of your creations, David. It's the Retro Corner. If you missed last week's podcast, this is a new segment to the show where we discuss something that we consider to be a little bit retro. It doesn't have to be TV or film related. Last week we spoke about um, free toys in serial. Um, and we had a nice little chat on that and this week I um, I want to discuss with my fellow podcasters um, some 90s school stories so things things that happened at school that people could sort of relate to regardless of where they went to school and you know little things like that in kind of relation to kids who maybe went to school in the 80s and 90s um, now I know as we as we found out last week, Stu, you're uh, you claim to be a lot younger than me, myself and Liam. Yeah. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how you get on here. And Considering you you told me about this topic, saying high school, and I didn't start high school until 2001. So. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um. Um. So I'll I'll do my primary school memories from the nineties. Yeah, you you can do you can do primary school. Um. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so I was just gonna um kick off with a couple of things. I'm already thinking Stu as well, you've got a little sister who's still at school. I do. So you might actually be able to help in terms of some things, because I've got a few questions of things that I'm not sure of whether they still do or not. Okay. Um, so for instance, one of the kind of memories that I was had when I was a kid, um, do you remember at school having to do what we called the register run, if you will? You know, like, yeah. You know at the start of the class when the, the, the teacher would take the register of who was there and then they would need somebody to go on an errand or to go and take it down to the school office or wherever it went and like, everyone would sh- like put their hand up just to go for a wander yes. and uh, and I remember doing that but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing now that that's all done electronically um, I believe it is um, I know in, in high school at least they still do uh, like a register in the morning and then that goes through the computer. Like even when I was at high school, we done it through the computer on that. Uh, yeah. But primary school, I think, might still be a runner. Yeah, I, j- I just yeah, I just remember it just being like the ultimate skive, like what should have been really <laughs> like a one minute walk. Um, yeah. You know, you would go like the longest way around the school, like round through <laughs> all the corridors and all this. Uh, I just I just love that sort of stuff. And then the the other kind of um, memory that springs to mind. Um, and again, not so much, uh, not so much related to nineties because I'm sure kids still get them these days. I assume is uh, BCG Jags. Do you remember them? Do you still get them? I, I, I remember it. Yeah, I've still got the little mark. Um, do, do you remember, remember them, Liam? When... Yeah. And every all people around high school would like. Was it high school or primary school? I can't remember. But people, high school, would, people high would punch school. you. Aye. Wouldn't they? Yeah, that was like. <laughs> and, oh, apparently it leaves a scar. And, uh, it leaves a scar anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have apparently, that anymore. Apparently, that was like the worst thing in the world. It you was. Don't have it anymore? No. What? No. Yeah, you do. I don't. You must do. I don't. You, you, I, the, I well, you didn't. You didn't get it then. No, I did. <laughs> I did get it because I remember the whole going around punching people's arms, but I don't have the mark anymore. <laughs> yeah. 
It really was a nasty. Liam's just violent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really was a nasty place, so school for stuff like that. Like, why would you? Who came up with that? Going around punching people's arms when they've just had a jack. <laughs> It's just... Yeah, apparently it was the sorest thing in the world. I don't remember it being sore. No, it was, and that's the thing. Everyone but used to it make... Was like this legend of it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that some sort of devil doctor would come round with, like, <laughs> this massive needle and all this. But, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and then I thought I'd throw it over to you guys, see what sort of um, school memories you had. Okay. Do you want to go first, Liam, or do you want me to go first? Uh, I'm trying to think what I was just going to... I think I've blocked out school, mostly, to be honest. Because uh, what memories <laughs> that I have... I think the only memory I could go of was uh, kind of what we were talking about... Well, not talk, what we were talking about last week, but Pokemon cards when I was at school. That was the big... I remember yeah. everyone... Uh, kind of... Not... Maybe fight... I don't know where fights broken out. They might have done over people trying to get cards from other people and all that, I remember. So it was always the kind of... That was a big craze for quite a while. And it always seemed to be a big yeah. phase... Your big collect Pogs was another one. Uh, Pogs. Yeah, do, you, do you remember the um, the yo-yo craze? Uh, yeah, I remember. I wasn't. I didn't really get into it, but yeah, other people did. Yeah. There was like this massive craze when yo-yos came back for a while, um, mm-hmm. and, and it was like, but they were different. They were well, yo-yos that you know when you um, released a yo-yo and it went to the ground, it would like stay at the bottom. So yeah, I guess it was yeah. weight, weighted or something. Yeah, trick ones, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and all that. That was a, a huge big craze. Um, <laughs> a lot of people's like teeth were knocked out of them and stuff. Yeah. Well, it was like weaponry in David's hometown. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it was, a, it was like conkers. The amount of kind of bruised fingers and stuff you would get from playing oh, conkers. Oh, yeah, conkers. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm assuming kids still play conkers because you still get conkers, <laughs> but. Um, I mean, are kids too busy playing on phones and stuff these days? Probably. Uh, we we still done it a little bit, but even then it was kind of getting phased out. It was only... <laughs> it was like two two, uh, two days a year or something that it happened and then nobody gave a shit. But um, do, you not, do you not remember all the tricks that people would say if you put your conquer in vinegar and all this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, people would like paint their conquers and, you know, put ball bearings inside them and all this sort of stuff. I absolutely remember that. <laughs> um, uh, there was another weird one like that and I can't remember what it was do you know speaking whether actually kids still play conquers um, do you remember on the last day of school when you would um, it would be I don't actually know what it was called like toy day basically you know you know when it, uh, this was more primary school when it was like the last day of term and everyone just brought in all their toys yeah um, I mean see now do you reckon kids just bring in like iPads and stuff. Yeah, probably. Uh, in fact, I don't. I don't even know if they do that anymore. Um, like, like I don't know if that's still a thing. Like, even my younger cousins and things like that. They never. Usually, it's just like a a sky day, basically, rather than where you bring in all your stuff. Um, yeah, you used to bring in like action figures and all that sort of things. Yeah. Board uh, board games. They were big. Or. Uh, um, yeah, I think it's more just like a look. They get a DVD put on for them, or get to play on the computer all day or something like that. Um, that sounds shit. Know. It does sound <laughs> shit. But then, like, if we get the chance to watch DVDs and play the computer in school, then we'd be chuffed. Yeah. We wouldn't have to bring in toys, you know. Yeah. But then, but um, I mean, when I was, and I'm sure. You guys, you'll you'll probably still be the same, Stu. Like when I was at primary school, we had like one computer for the whole school. Yeah. Like it, it, you know, it wasn't like now where all high schools uh, in primary schools, I suspect they all have a computer in every classroom, or they have they probably all have computers in the desks now, um, <laughs> and all that. But um, no, but it's uh, like playing the computer. It's it was it was kind of novelty, but back then not a lot of people had experience of computers yeah. if that makes sense Yeah. so a lot of people didn't have computers at the home or certainly didn't have games so it was like a real kind of novelty and nobody knew um, quite how to play them it was the same like I remember we had a jumbo sale once at our school and they asked all the kids to bring in like you know their old toys and games and they were going to have this big charity jumbo sale and uh, I can't even remember what we're raising for um, it wasn't like Computer a charity probably yeah probably yeah it was it wasn't like a charity it was some sort of school thing that we needed and um 
we were part of the organising committee for it, and we got this, like, the Super Nintendo had just been released, right. and there was one guy in our class who had a Super Nintendo, and we asked him to bring it in, oh, and God. he brought it into this jumbo sale, and um, we, we set it up on the school TV, and uh, we be, he had one game, which was Street Fighter 2. Nice. Um, Street, Street Fighter 2 Turbo it was, and we used to charge people, like, a quid, oh. for, a quid, quid for a game or something like that. It was like a complete rip off. And we had this one guy, whose Super Nintendo it was, and he would he would go against everyone. And if you beat him, you got like a something shite, like a cornflake cake or something. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, but like because no one else had the Super Nintendo, like no one knew any of the moves. Well, this guy's just like you know, you know, f- doing all the fireballs and the kicks yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And just like I think, I think he went the whole day undefeated. I thought that, I thought that <laughs> story was going to go with that he brought any snares and then someone bought it at the jump sale. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what, that's what, that's what you going. meant. Oh, that, that would have been a better story, actually, wouldn't it? Um, that guy was never seen again after <laughs> he went home. Yeah. Um, yeah, like most of my memories are just when we're talking about the the one computer uh, in school. Uh, we had it in our classroom and. I was in primary five or something like that, and we used to like, actually fight to get on. It was it wasn't even a computer; it was a Mac. Um, Macs were the thing for schools for some reason, um, and it was it was like three games, and they were all terrible. It was one about a dinosaur. Uh, it was like a spelling dinosaur or something like that. I can't remember. Um, and there was one uh, that was pretty much snake. Yeah. Uh, and then there was this weird one where it was like a top-down version of Crazy Taxi, if you've ever played that. Oh, yeah. Uh, like the arcade machines. Uh, but it was Flat Eric from... Uh, oh, God, what was it? Was it The Tonight Show or something like that? Uh, the wee yellow dog that was in the Eminem video. Oh, I know. Oh, is that... Yeah. Did they not have a hit single, Mr. Wazzo? <laughs> uh, Possibly. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure they had like a number think, one hit. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that must have been at the same time actually. Yeah, um, and that will probably be why the character was in this game. But yeah, um, Flat Eric was uh, the was a character in this weird taxi game, um, and we used to fight each other to get on this. Um, so well, most of my primary school memories are that uh, playing Pokemon, uh, everyone bringing their Game Boys in and playing that on our our breaks. Um, I was the best, obviously, because uh, I was the geeky one in school. <laughs> um, and see now, Stu. I mean, you'll know if you if your sisters at school are they allowed mobile phones at school? Um, yeah, kind. Look, they're allowed to take them, but they're not allowed to use them. Because I I just I suspect now kids at school will just all be texting under the desk. And stuff. Uh, yeah, look, that's. I mean, even when I was in school, we used to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, when so did you go to school, day. David? No, that. but I'm more, think, I'm more thinking. I'm thinking more like primary school, really. Oh, no, okay. Um, I don't, I don't know about primary school. Um, like my wee sister never had a, a phone in primary school. Um, I think I was maybe a bit too young. Uh, but high school definitely they'll just sit with the phones under the desk and text and browse the internet and whatever, cheat on whatever it is they're supposed to be doing. Um, I've lost my train of thought now. I totally forgot what I was going to say there. Uh, oh, I take it uh, you guys, when you were at school, used to do, uh, go out and play football on the ash pitches? Or did you just have fancy grass pitches? I had concrete, man. Yeah, we had concrete. Yeah. Concrete, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 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 Oft. And we we weren't allowed a ball on the playground uh, because <laughs> really? of, what what kind of sad school is that? <laughs> well, to, imagine on. imagine right. You've got this concrete playground, and uh, when you're playing football, the amount of times you you know go into tackles and go over, the amount of kids that had like like proper like we're not even talking like grazed knees, we're talking like chunks out of them, um, you know, because he's gone in for all sorts of slide tackles and stuff on concrete. Um, I think I think it was probably a wise decision to ban it in our school uh, <laughs> because it, it was quite a small school as well, so the playground wasn't that big. So right. to play football in it, it was just asking for trouble. So people oh. used to 
obviously kids being kids we used to improvise so we used to get those you know those little miniature bottles of iron brew yeah we used to get those tiny ones we would like half fill that <laughs> <Play nutmegs>. <laughs> <laughs> and then like no we just used to use that as a football oh. uh, <laughs> or or even more dangerously we used to get like a can of juice and then crush it and then kick that and use that as a football and i'll tell you see if you've got that flying through the air this oh god this can of juice with all these edges crushed edges <laughs> it was like a, like a ninja star flying through the playground uh you, you don't want to get your head on that um, um yeah just when you said that it reminded me um i my my longest lasting memory is uh i got my teeth chipped my front two teeth chipped because someone threw a bottle of do you remember when virgin used to make coca-cola yeah well, it was their own off-brand version of it. Someone threw one of those tiny little bottles at me and it, it chipped my two front teeth. Um, so now I'm stuck with, uh, what do you Who? call it, like, crowns. Um, <laughs> because of that. Who so, was it? Thanks. Na- uh, na- name and shame them. <laughs> oh, God, I don't even remember. What had you done to deserve that? Uh, well, I'd just been stupid. Uh, it was playing 17 aside football on the ash pitch and... Uh, I, I think I tripped him up or something like that, and uh, he decided to look. In fact, mm, I can't remember if it was that or something else. Um, but someone threw a bottle, and then someone kind of matrixed underneath the bottle, and it hit someone else. I don't remember if that was me that got hit, or if it was me that dodged it. So, something like that. It was amazing. <laughs> um, Yeah, I can't remember who it was. I can't name and shame him, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, probably shouldn't use real names for people on the on the podcast anyway, just in the off chance they'll listen and then come and hunt us down because of serial killers now. <laughs> well, you never know. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, the other thing we used to do on our, our breaks was uh, wrestling. WWF was huge. Uh, it was like the attitude era of the, of the WWF and we used to go and wrestle on the uh, on the hill and we used to have like our own uh, titles set up and all that <laughs> it was amazing um, obviously getting in trouble for it but nobody really cared we just done it anyway did you guys play this is going to make me sound like a dream uh, did you guys ever play uh, was it what was it like kiss cuddle or torture or something like that you guys were trying to say? kiss cuddle and torture uh, those were classic the, those were the days I don't know that one. What was that? That was when. <laughs> oh, you it, <laughs> that was when the boys and the girls. So you had to like, like the boys would chase the girls, and then if you <laughs> caught a girl, then you'd say like kiss, curl, or torture. So if they said kiss, you gave a kiss. You each kissed each other. If it was cuddle, you gave a cuddle. Or if it was torture, I think you need them in the bum. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we used to play that, and then we got into trouble because because it was torture, and we apparently were it was being violent. It was a violent game we were playing, so we were yeah. we were banned from playing. What? It. It was it was a complete yeah. When you think about that, I don't know who came up with that game, but it was uh, it was very kind of famous because we used to. You, you just went after uh, the it, person you fancied. So if you fancied well, a girl, you're like, right, I'm going to chase after her. <laughs> you just... Yeah. So all these girls would chase you, and then if you got caught uh, got caught by a girl who you didn't think was very nice, you would just be like um, torture, <laughs> and then they would th- then they would like punch you on the arm, or if it was just you you know then you'd have this really hot girl. Like chasing you, and you'd like you'd suddenly slow up, and then she'd catch you, and you'd be like, "Oh, kiss!" <laughs> Do you know it was like it was just a ridiculous game, really. <laughs> uh, although we didn't need them in the bum, I, yeah, I think it was a punch in the shoulder. Uh, we need, bizarre school we need, variant. We need them in the bum. I don't know why it was needed in the bum. Probably a punch in the shoulder <laughs> probably would have been better. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming they still have these games or variants of them. Um, I I would hope anyway. Probably, it'd be really sad if, if kids didn't have stupid playground games to play. Even like Tunnel Tag and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, I remember that. Tag, that was yeah. Not so good if you don't have, uh, if you've only got concrete right enough. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a slide through someone's legs on concrete doesn't sound too uh, appetising. Yeah, that one. Uh, appealing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, as I said, so we used to, we, we used to have to play Tunnel Tag on concrete. Um, oh, so you just kind of get used to, to doing that. Um, but I, I'm I'm starting to think that my school might have been a bit rougher <laughs> than, uh, than um, some of the other ones. I mean, we had a game. Uh, just quickly, I'm I'm conscious of the time here. 
but we had this game where there was this one kid in our um, in our class, um, and um, give me a fake name. Let's use John Smith, right? Okay. So the game yeah. would. <laughs> Yeah, I, th this isn't one of those stories, by the way, where I'm the kid. <laughs> this really is about someone else. Okay. Um, and it, the game was called um, Throw John Smith in the Bin. <laughs> like, you know that you say that, I'm just totally imagining it's you. <laughs> it's, it, it really wasn't me. Um, but this, it, it was weird, right? Because we had this one bin in the playground, and it was one of those sort of big um, black sort of waste bin styles. You know, it would come up to your kind of waist. You know, yeah. kind of big sort of industrial kind of bin, and it would the game was you know throw John Smith in the bin, and around the summertime this bin would always be full and it would always always be swarming with wasps. Oh god! Because it was one, of the, it was just you know wasps always kind of congregate all the sugar that was in this bin and all that mm. sort of stuff, and um, so people used to go to the bin and they would start kicking the bin oh, just god. to sort of <laughs> infuriate all the wasps. <laughs> <laughs> so. Like, the game was, you know, throw John Smith in the bin, so you'd have someone's job who it was to, like, just annoy the wasps in the bin, and then some, then the other people's job was to chase this poor, <laughs> bloody kid around the playground until they caught him, and then threw him in the bin with all these wasps. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> I bet he's <laughs> a zero colour now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it is one of those things that, looking back, and you think, man, how, like, that is, like, real kind of bullying do you know what I mean like that poor kid yeah a lot um, about, yeah. <laughs> but but like you just didn't think anything of it at the time it was just it was just a game it's not because but, you weren't John Smith though I think if you were John yeah, Smith true. you'd be like <laughs> well so he says <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah anyway right. that, that's all my memories good time to wrap up yes absolutely well before we yeah. go sorry I know the time's ticking on and this is really really off topic and it doesn't need to okay. be on the podcast. You can cut it out. But this is really random. David, you don't have a, a member of your family that lives in Edinburgh and works as a boiler man, do you? A boiler engineer, I don't know what the term is. No? <laughs> this is a really <laughs> random thing <laughs> for the guy came we, to fix so random, So random, we should leave this in <laughs> yeah, the Yeah, this should absolutely be left in. Just because a guy uh, came round to fix my boiler, that's not a, a euphemism. And... Um, mm -hmm. And he was, I shit you not, he was the spin image of you, and I was like, holy shit, it's David. <laughs> and, um, I was just like, I wonder if David has any family that lived in Edinburgh. Like, I nearly went to him, so you know someone called David McGregor, because he was honestly the spin image of you. No, <laughs> I, I confirm that I have I have no family that work in the boiler industry. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Or that, or that live in Edinburgh. Fair enough. Although, do you know, this is, that actually reminds me, sorry, this is going to sound like an awful segment for anyone listening. Um, <laughs> So, at the back of my house, right, this is one of those things I was once going to mention to you, but I thought, no, that's too sad and trivial to mention, <laughs> until you just brought up the fact you thought I, one of my family members, worked as a boiler in Edinburgh. Um, but right outside um, the back of my house, there's this van that is always parked there, and it's called El Kearney Roofing. Uh -huh. That's my weekend. And, I, That's my weekend and I thought I, at one time I was going to text you and say, "Oh, have you got a roofing company? Yep. Is your van's out here?" And I thought, "No, that's too sad." Is this is this because I'm stalking you, David? That's what it is. That's my cover. Maybe that is it. Oh well, that's fine. At least I'll we'll mention to them the next. I'm quite glad I didn't say anything to the boiler guy then. That was bad. Yeah. Bad. Yeah, you can see the hit rates going off the. <laughs> <laughs> going to shoot, shoot out the roof for this segment. <laughs> All these people turning off their podcasts. Anyway, good time to do the outros. Yes. So, uh, as usual, you can go and follow. In fact, you absolutely should go and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube, Google Plus, all of that pish. Um, I think we're at TV and Film Review on most of them, apart from YouTube, which is TV and Film Reviews with an S. It is, and well worth checking and subscribing. We have um, some new footage up there um, over the last week. We were at Newcastle. Oh, yeah, some Comic-Con Con stuff. Yeah, so some interviews and some Comic-Con stuff there. We've got some more stuff going up, so make sure you subscribe. Yes, um, and you can go and follow each of us. Uh, you've got a, a former Pokemon master, uh, myself, at... Uh, uh, what's my Twitter handle? At the Stew Dog. That's the one. Um, you got a former boiler here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, secretly fixing boilers. We've yep, got at, at, at David McGregor84. That's me. Yep. 
and being kiss cuddled and tortured. Oh, yeah. You've got Liam at crisp underscore packet. That is correct. Yes, I got it right. <laughs> I always get that one wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, go follow us on Twitter and uh, tell us what you thought of the show. Uh, any uh, suggestions for Challenge Stew or uh, Retro Corner suggestions? We're, we're happy, uh, happy to take them on board and maybe get you a wee shout out on the on the show. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you in a fortnight. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.